Up until the end of the 13th century, the furnaces where artisanal glass was produced and manufactured were located in Venice, among houses and palaces. Fires, however, were dreadfully frequent. The stone furnaces, fueled by wood, were to blame for many disasters which cost thousands of people their lives, both among the workers and the city population. Because of the frequency of these accidents, fear that the fires would spread from house to house and from palace to palace, destroying the entire city of Venice, was common and widespread. Thus, in 1295, the Doge Pietro Gratenigo issued a decree ordering that all Venetian glassworks, probably active since before the year 1000, be moved on the nearby island of Morano. Concentrating all glassworks in Morano allowed the Serenissima to better control their activity. Possessive of the art which had given Venice worldwide fame since its origins. Master glass craftsmen were obliged to live on the island and could only leave Venice by way of a special permit. Among commoners, only master glass craftsmen were allowed to marry into aristocracy. Besides master glass craftsmen, one of the most important professionals in glasswork is that of the chemical composer. He's the only one in possession of the formulas to the various working techniques. This knowledge is jealously fostered and passed on from father to son. Raw materials are mixed together in the evening and the process can take all night. Soda, as well as other ingredients, is added to silica, which is a type of sand that is converted into glass by fusion. These are secret mixtures, jealously fostered by the family they belong to. In the morning, the maestros find the material molten and ready to be molded into shape. Glass paste remains ductile to a temperature of over 800 degrees centigrade. The working team, known as the Piazza, is made up of assistants and workshop boys, coordinated by the maestro. The invention of glass blowing dates back to the 1st century BC. It originated on the eastern coasts of the Mediterranean and it remains the most significant event in the history of glasswork. In Venice especially, glass blowing became the most favoured technique to produce high grade glassworks. Murano's maestros have developed, starting from the Middle Ages, extraordinary hot working abilities, inventing new techniques and achieving highly refined and elegant products. Today, as in the past, this art has been passed on throughout the centuries from one generation to the next. People come to Murano from all over the world to admire these works of craftsmanship. Only glass produced in Murano's furnaces can be called Murano glass. Like this vase in gold leaf and decorated with a marine technique. The maestro starts working on the red hot glass. Employing the technique of rotation and the same tools from the past, he moulds the mass. He proceeds by blowing into the blowpipe to inflate and shape the glass. With remarkable skill, he lays gold leaf on the mass. 
Once the operation is completed, the object is put back into the furnace so that the gold leaf becomes one with the glass. Then the vase is left out until all the excess glass has dripped off and the marine are applied. This is a slow and precise operation. In order to adjust the thickness of the vase walls, the technique of glass blowing is employed, which requires a great experience, as well as additional molding with pliers. It is always necessary to maintain the glass mass at a temperature of at least 800 degrees centigrade. For this reason, the mass is put back in the furnace multiple times during the molding process. The mass is then transferred to a different blowpipe in order to work on the top part of the vase. The constant rotation, as well as the use of pliers and scissors, allows the maestro to mould the material to perfection. Through these gestures, perfected over centuries of experience, passed on through generations, the maestro moulds the glass into the desired shape. Once moulding is complete, it is necessary to temper the vase by leaving it in the furnace for at least one night in order to lower its temperature in such a fashion as to prevent damage to the object. Here is the completed vase a true work of art. Ever since the Middle Ages, dinnerware has been a typical product of Murano's glassworks. One of the first working techniques ever introduced was used to produce goblets. The main decorative element is represented by the base and stem. Indeed, that's where the master glass craftsman's work starts. The technique employed is again that of glass blowing, carried out by one of the assistants, while the maestro takes care of the rotation and the moulding of the glass mass. The filigree is one among various techniques employed in glassworks. The twisted filigree and 15th century Riticella filigree techniques, for example, which create the effect of a delicate embroidery within the glass. Once the lower part of the goblet is completed, the artisan created the cup. Skillful puffs of air blown into the pipe inflate the thin mass of glass. An extra puff is enough to hinder the entire process and require that the procedure is repeated. After the creation of an opening, the next very delicate stage is the transition to another blowpipe. Then, a drop of red-hot glass is applied to the base of the cup in order to seal it to the lower part of the goblet. The object is then fired in the furnace. The work is now complete. Different shapes and colours of the cup, as well as the shape and decorations of the stem, make each work a unique piece. One of the most renowned glass working techniques in Murano is lamp working. This technique is employed to create beads, rings, pendants, necklaces and various items of jewellery as well as artwork objects of all shapes and decor elements. Starting from semi-finished glass rods, a bead is made, sometimes glass blown, on which another layer of glass is laid for decorative purposes. This stage of the work requires imagination, absolute accuracy and outstanding workmanship.
Assembling also requires some patience. Beads are threaded one after the other to obtain beautiful combinations. This process results in accessories of the highest quality. In order to soften the glass rod, a glass torch is employed. The rod is first wound around a metal tube to mold the bead into the desired shape. Then other elements are applied, polychrome glass, marine, gold, silver or other precious materials. Finally, the bead is put in the furnace where all the various elements are fused together, creating an exclusive object with a unique look. Each bead does not look like any other. Superb decor elements can be created from marina glass rods. Rods are crushed by a dedicated shearing machine, obtaining thus colored glass fragments, which are then delivered to the composition section. Here, specialized workers arrange with great accuracy the fragments in a circular mold. The result is an incredible variety of shapes and colors. Piece by piece, the final arrangement takes shape. Every plate is different from any other. At this point, the molds are put inside special furnaces where the process of fusion takes place. From here stems the word fusing, that is, glass fusion. Grinding and a second firing allow the creation of extraordinary decor elements of exclusive shapes and colors. Designers and interior architects from all over the world work with Murano's glassworks to create such works of craftsmanship to add a touch of class to houses and villas. It's almost incredible to think how many shapes glass can be molded into, both in the creation of marine and of extraordinary polychrome fishnet glass rods. The glass mass is molded with great skill. The maestro and his aid, located at the two opposite extremities, cannot stop the rotation as they slowly lengthen and thin out the paste. The final result is incredible. Among artistic glasswork products, a domain peculiar to Murano is that of decorations. Enamelling is essentially an ornamental painting, realized with a material consisting of the same components of the glass it is laid on. After a second firing in an appropriate furnace, the paint becomes one with the glass object and rendered permanent. Gold leaf can also be applied on the object. The art of enamelling has Islamic and Byzantine origins and, like other Oriental arts, it was imported in Venice. It developed in Murano during the 13th century. It then bloomed during the early Renaissance. Some enameled objects from the second half of the 15th century have been preserved until today and are quite renowned, such as goblets, glasses, bottles decorated with sumptuous figurative paintings. Some of these works had been ordered from Murano's glassworks by aristocrats and sovereigns from all over Europe. In the artistic domain, a prominent role is played by glass sculptures, true works of art realized by Murano's maestros based on their own drawings or drawings from the greatest artists in the world. The realization of Murano glass sculptures entails peculiar connotations as it involves working with large masses of red-hot glass. Murano's glass craftsman sculptors, contrary to those sculptors who work with different materials, cannot touch directly the material they're molding and need to employ crude, albeit perfectly appropriate, iron tools in order to obtain the soft and fluid curves 
that are peculiar to glass sculpture. The glass might be so heavy to require the use of carts to move the large mass. More so than in other domains, teamwork is fundamental. The maestro moulds the glass while the assistant blows into the glass pipe to inflate the sculpture. The maestro himself moulds the mass while it is still in the furnace and once it is taken out, he proceeds to the final stage. The sculpture is tempered with a blowtorch and compressed air. And then the masterstroke. One of the extremities is lengthened into a sleek spiral shape. Once the object has been polished, we can see the final result. A true work of art. In the past few decades, many works have been realized through grinding, a cold work technique. It is employed to create distinctive effects on the surface of the object. In this stage, the glass is cut, smoothed to get rid of all imperfections, and then decorated with grooves, engravings, grindings, glazes, which enhance the glass with different lights and colors. Appropriate machines move sandstone wheels of different sizes which, in large water tubs, allow the workers to work the objects by hand and thus create beautiful sculptures or decor elements. Through grinding, perfectly smooth and clear surfaces can be obtained. Engraved and glazed glass creates unique effects, gives life to the final object. After a last touch with a cork wheel to complete the work, you can now enjoy this wonderful vase and its many shades of blue. Another renowned traditional product of Murano are the mirrors which decorated the most sumptuous palaces of Venice and the entire world. The process of realization is long and complex, from preliminary drawings to the last touches. Once a design has been defined and agreed upon, the glass is engraved with a diamond point over the wood structure of the mirror. Edges are immediately rubbed down with sandpaper. It is then necessary to verify that the first element and the frame fit together perfectly. The next stage is engraving. It is done with a small metal wheel called rotina. The deeper strokes appear to be in relief, so that this type of engraving produces a bas-relief effect on the glass surface. The following stage, plating, turns the glass into a real mirror. The glass is treated with chemical components and it acquires reflective properties. This is the result. The mirror glass is fitted into the original frame. The artisan assembles the object with great skills arranging and fitting every element in the right place. Then, decorative elements are applied, such as frames and gold leaf. The final result is extraordinary. Ever since the Renaissance, Murano has been an important production hub for refined artistic mirrors either traditionally styled or sporting a more modern design. 
unique in their genre are Murano glass pendants. Traditional candlestick chandeliers, decorated by glass flower and pendants, still hold a prominent position in the island's production. It takes a long time and many different steps to realize one of these chandeliers. Indeed, each element has to be created individually. Elements can be molded in many different shapes. The master glass craftsman shows his skill by creating handmade single items, but identical in size and proportions. Bowls are obtained with the Morise technique, namely by pinching and moulding the red-hot glass. Once all decorative elements, the leaves, the bowls, and the branches are completed, the shaft is realized. Finally, the main bowl is prepared, which will be in contact with the ceiling and the flowers. Each element, decorated with gold lead, is then put back in a special furnace, the lair, to be slowly brought down to room temperature and prevent cracks. Assembly is the next step. Each element is put together and meticulously checked, before being disassembled once again and packed for shipping. Many designers in the 20th centuries tried their hand at Murano glass chandelier designing. But demand for traditional models remains strong and the workers' skills in moulding their delicate elements has never subsided. Another artistic glass product is the Masiccio. Large glass sculptures not realized with the glass blowing technique, but through molding of heavy masses of red hot glass. In this type of work, contrary to sculptures carved in other materials such as wood, stone or marble, the material is not sculpted, carved or removed. On the contrary, small quantities of glass are added to the main red-hot block. In order to create extraordinary shapes, a torch is used to maintain a high temperature on the part the artisans need to work on. Once the base has been realized, the work proceeds to the top part of the sculpture. Using pliers, the maestro can mold the mass until it takes the desired form. The final result is exquisite. Once finished, the product is marked with the trademark Vetro Artistico di Morano, Morano Art Glasswork, which is the only trademark legally registered and certifying the Morano origin of the product.
Then, the piece is properly packed to be shipped. Every day, glasswork products leave Murano to be shipped all over the world. Murano has been devoted to this art for centuries. Its status of island in the Venetian lagoon makes even the transportation of the goods to the mainland a peculiar process. Carriers visit each glasswork shop daily, moving by boat in the maze of canals of the island. The tour completed, the goods cross over to the goods yard, where the works are loaded into trucks, containers, trains or planes to be appreciated in the entire world. Wherever you are in the world, when you want to buy a product from the island of Murano, always choose one with the trademark Vitro Artistico di Murano. Murano Art Glasswork, which certifies its origin and identifies the company which manufactured it according to the traditional Murano techniques. The brand is the only means to protect producers, retailers and buyers of glasswork products. Only by choosing the glasswork showing the trademark Vetro Artistico di Murano art glasswork from Murano, can you be sure that you have purchased an exclusive and original item created by the expert hands of the maestros from Murano? An art passed on from father to son, from one generation to the next. Today, like in the past, man is the fulcrum of everything, skill, experience, craftsmanship, knowledge. Little, if anything, has changed in all these centuries. Murano glass is only produced in the island of Murano. Secret formulas carefully preserved throughout the centuries.